Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So today I'm going to do high yield review on vitamin E. So vitamin E is collectively referred for two molecules and that is tocopherol and tocotrienol. Now out of all these two molecules, so the tocopherols are more common and uh, there are four types of tocopherols that are existing. They are alpha tocopherol, beta tocopherol, gamma tocopherol and delta tocopherol. Out of all these, so the most common or most abundantly available tocopherol in North American diet is gamma tocopherol. But in terms of biological activity, alpha tocopherol is the most biologically active form of tocopherol. That is why whenever we talk about vitamin E, so we talk about alpha tocopherol because that's an active, most act, biologically active form of vitamin E. Now what are the sources for vitamin E? So the sources for vitamin E is oils. So basically any type of oil, so it can be corn oil, soft flower oil, sunflower oil, so vitamin E is rich in all kinds of oils. That is why, so just use of oil is sufficient to have vitamin E in its, in our as a RDA or recommended dietary allowance. So we are going to get vitamin E, sufficient vitamin E from oils here. Now. What are the roles of these tocopherol, alpha tocopherol or gamma tocopherol, what it actually does, what, what kind of roles they play in our body. So the tocopherol, one of the most important function of vitamin E in our body is they act as antioxidants. So important function of tocopherol is antioxidant function. Especially alpha tocopherol, so alpha tocopherol, they, it is acting as an uh, antioxidant for reactive oxygen species. So white, alpha tocopherol, it is going to neutralize reactive oxygen species in our body. Whereas the gamma tocopherol, it is going to neutralize reactive nitrogen species. So overall, whether it is an alpha tocopherol or gamma tocopherol, so they both act as antioxidants in our body. And also note that having sufficient amount of vitamin E and having its antioxidant activity, so it is going to spare the antioxidant activity of glutathione. So it's going to spare glutathione for its other glutathione peroxidase re related activities. Basically having vitamin E or ascorbate, which is another vitamin which has got antioxidant. So it is going to spare glutathione in our body. So these antioxidants, they work synergistically. Now apart from antioxidant function of vitamin E, so what else vitamin E plays a role in our body? So the vitamin E, it prevents LDL oxidation. So one of the role of vitamin E or the tocopherol in our body is prevention of LDL oxidation. So by preventing LDL oxidation, so what vitamin E does is it is going to prevent atherosclerosis process in our body. So as you all know, atherosclerosis, this is the one which can lead to, so the atheroma can form and atheroma can break open and it can make emboli thrombosis and emboli. So this emboli can go and uh, obstruct a small coronary is giving rise to my myocardial infarction or it can obstruct cerebral vasculature and that can give rise to stroke. So having sufficient vitamin E, so it prevents LDL oxidation, thereby it prevents atherosclerosis and thereby it is going to decrease cerebrovascular events. Now that's the function, another function of vitamin E. One another function of vitamin E is it is known to participate in heme synthesis process. That's another function of vitamin E, heme synthesis. Apart from heme synthesis, so vitamin E plays a role in immune mechanism and thereby it prevents the macular degeneration in elderly people. 
and also vitamin E it has got a role in electron transport chain especially it is going to stabilize ubiquinone ubiquinone is a mobile complex in electron transport chain so by sufficient vitamin E so it is going to stabilize ubiquinone thereby it is going to participate in cellular respiration and that is electron transport chain so these are some of the functions of vitamin E in our body. Just quickly to revise, so vitamin E as the most important function of vitamin E is antioxidant function. It is going to prevent LDL oxidation. It is going to participate in heme synthesis. It is going to participate in immune mechanism. And also it is going to stabilize ubiquinone and participate in electron transport chain. Now let's move on to see what all the causes for vitamin E deficiency in our body. So the dietary deficiency of vitamin E is very rare. So the vitamin E deficiency it is most of the time secondary to something else. Vitamin E deficiency is not because of dietary deficiency because dietary deficiency is very rare because it is available in most of the oils so the deficiency can be because of cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis can give rise to malabsorption of the lipids and malabsorption of the lipids can give rise to vitamin A, D, E, K deficiency so that's how vitamin E deficiency can be seen here vitamin E deficiency can be because of celiac disease and that's because in celiac disease there is a malabsorption of lipids. Vitamin E deficiency can be seen in a disease called A beta lipoproteinemia. A beta lipoproteinemia is because of mutation in a gene coding for a protein called MTP that is microsomal transfer protein. So in this particular disorder, so the formation of chylomicrons are affected and that so there won't be formation of chylomicrons and that's why transport of vitamin A, D, E, K from intestine to the liver is decreased. That's how vitamin E deficiency can be seen in A beta lipoproteinemia. Vitamin E deficiency can be seen in biliary insufficiency. Biliary insufficiency can give rise to malabsorption of the lipids and thereby vitamin A, D, E, K deficiency can be seen here. So these are some of the causes for vitamin E deficiency. So cystic fibrosis, celiac disease, A beta lipoproteinemia, biliary insufficiency or any pancreatic exocrine pancreatic disorder, obstructive jaundice, that kind of things can give rise to vitamin E deficiency. Any causes that leads to lipid malabsorption technically they can give rise to vitamin E deficiency in our body. Now let's move on to see what are the clinical manifestations of vitamin D sorry vitamin E deficiency. So the clinical manifestations of vitamin E in one or the other way it will be related to decreased antioxidant function of vitamin E. So note that vitamin E by acting as a reactive uh, neutralizer of reactive oxygen species means antioxidant for reactive oxygen species. So whenever there is a deficiency of vitamin E, so this reactive oxygen species, uh, neutralization of reactive oxygen species is decreased. Thereby reactive oxygen species, they will predominate and they are going to damage membrane. Especially vitamin E, it will be located on the cell membrane. Normally, you are going to see vitamin E on cell membranes. Thereby, it is going to prevent lipid peroxidation. Antioxidant function of vitamin E is, it is going to prevent lipid peroxidation. That's the antioxidant function of vitamin E, lipid peroxidation. Reactive oxygen species, they are going to snatch electron from polyunsaturated fatty acids present in the membrane and thereby they lead to lipid peroxidation and because of this lipid peroxidation so there will be increase in cell permeability. 
so when there is increase in cell permeability so that can give rise to cell damage and can give rise to cell death now having sufficient vitamin e so all this lipid peroxidation process can be prevented now in clinical manifestation so whenever there is a vitamin e deficiency lipid peroxidation predominate because reactive oxygen species are predominating and that can affect the majority of cells one of the cell um, uh, cell that is most commonly affected is the myelinated neurons in the spinal cord so because the long spinal myelinated neurons so their membrane need to be protected all along the track now if the vitamin e is deficient so that uh, that function of vitamin e is taken off and that is why the myelinated neurons in the spinal tract are most susceptible for the vitamin e mani uh, deficiency manifestation so that will give rise to a disorder called means the clinical sign called spino cerebellar degeneration or spino cerebellar ataxia this is one of the clinical sign that you are going to see in vitamin e deficiency spino cerebellar ataxia is because of degeneration of myelinated neurons and accordingly so as as the name says ataxia so there will be in coordination of the movement and also there can be a signs of polyneuropathy in vitamin e deficiency so polyneuropathy can be examined as like decreased sensation decreased vibratory sense decreased sensation to the uh, touch decreased uh, sensation to the temperature uh decrease the reflexes all those are the signs related with polyneuropathy and uh, in vitamin e deficiency you can see hemolytic anemia hemolytic anemia is one of the sign that is seen in vitamin e deficiency and that's because lipid peroxidation is going on over the red blood cell membrane and that will break open the red blood cell and leads to hemolysis so vitamin e deficiency can also lead to skeletal myopathy so muscle membrane can be affected again mechanism is same same lipid peroxidation which is affecting the skeletal muscle membrane so that will lead to increase in cell permeability and giving rise to skeletal myopathy even the retina is affected in vitamin e deficiency giving rise to pigmented retinopathy so clinical manifestations associated with vitamin e are spino cerebellar ataxia polyneuropathy hemolytic anemia skeletal myopathy one or the other way all these signs that i am explaining now so it is all related with the lipid peroxidation process because deficiency of vitamin e so its antioxidant function is not there so the reactive oxygen species they will cause lipid peroxidation giving rise to all these signs and symptoms now treatment is you just need to supplement vitamin e to these patients one thing that you need to take care is you need you should not be over enthusiastic in treating vitamin e deficiency especially if the patient is on warfarin or dicumarol that is blood thinning medication so vitamin e doses should be monitored because vitamin e can interfere with warfarin and uh, dicumarol function basically vitamin e potentiates the action of warfarin or dicumarol thereby blood thinning effect of uh, these medications will be increased and that can lead to hemorrhagic disorder so that's one of the precaution that one should take while supplementing vitamin e level, uh, vitamin e to the patient so this is all about uh, vitamin e most of the points that you need to know for examination or just for the knowledge so i hope this video has helped you to understand vitamin e in a much better way so if you have any co comments or if you have any doubts so don't hesitate to come in, uh, put your question or a doubt in the comment box below i'll try to answer it uh, to the best of my knowledge and ability or if it needs to make another video so i'll try to make a video to give an explanation thanks for watching and see you again in another video so till then take care oh